Not sure what I just did. See you later. Good. Um, what's this? Warning Lighting disabled in excavation zone. Remaining in the area is hazardous. Please reboot free power circuits and restore power supply. What am I supposed to be doing? You have to find three terminals for energy circuit and reboot them. Alright, so I'm assuming it's these then? But there's a third one somewhere. That one I turned on. Doesn't look like anything here. Maybe it's out here? God, I hope not. Wouldn't make sense why it would have one out there. Right? Oh, it's right here. Enabling lighting in the excavation zone. Warning. Damage to power system detected. Start the emergency generator. Yeah, that's not it. Not these. Hmm. I look pretty creepy out there. Alright, so... Restarting the power circuit did not yield the desired effect. The station's power grid was destroyed, but there is a backup generator in the cave. Lighting can be restored. Okay. All right, let's sneak. Can I? God, there's so many of you. Sneak around you. There's so many people out here. I get spotted, I'm good as dead. I mean, maybe they won't attack me at all, who knows, but... Oh. So whatever's out there is killing me? Let's take a little walk out here just to see what's happening to me. Whatever that is, that hurts. I did level up. I 
I take 13 pure damage. I'm not sure exactly what pure damage is. So, there's monsters and stuff. It's like something's changed these people. So, they're kind of gone crazy. I don't know how... How am I going to get it through here? What to tell me in the quest? Your first attempt to explore the excavation almost got you killed. Each time you entered the darkness, you begin dying slowly. You'll need to find a way to turn on the lights in the excavation area, otherwise you will die. So, I gotta stay in the light? Man, that thing hurt really bad. So there's a light here. Here. That turns off. There. I gotta make it here. Any of these turn on? Well, that's the generator, I bet. Okay. Like the rat game? Okay. We'll see if these people attack me. Don't attack me. Generator's on. Is that light going to go off? Unless you want the rat. Oh! Plague Tail. Yeah. A little like that. Lighting enabled. Have a nice day, employee. Okay, so let's do our level up. Okay, so I got 24 skill points to put in. Um, personal reputation plus 20. Scanning more effective grant to you. I keep forgetting I can scan. Target within the radius of two meters is guaranteed to get negative 25 to all types of resistance for one round. Uh, supposedly, I looked this up, supposedly there is no max level. But you'll be in around, I believe, like level 20, 22. By, by the time you're beating the game. I'm level 5 at the moment. Uh, like melee stuff on t some of this tech I don't want. Your knowledge of technology, but I do need the gunsmithing.
manufacture, improve, and others very many. Okay, so yeah. So we're going to put... Put you to... 50. In medicine, we're at 60 at the moment. More fatigue. It's kind of nice, too. Or I could put more into combat. Do you want points into contraptions also? Ability to throw weapons from cobblestones to grenades. Do high tech weapons. There we go. So, what am I, 16 away from maxing out my high tech weapons? As a bag of hammers, high tech weapon ability. That's melee attack. Dark gun ability. Cryo laser ability. Doesn't deal damage. 80% chance. Fortitude. Blinds everyone in a radius. That's kind of nice. Smart shot. 20% damage. Hits all targets in a line of fire. Guaranteed crit. Nice. Okay. Nothing for perks yet. <clears throat> Alright, let's keep going. Hopefully these guys don't attack me. Weren't earlier. That's the relic. This amber orange ball hovering above the scientific equipment connected to it seems to be the reason for what happened in Nashville. You can feel the waves of anomalous radiation emanating from it with your whole body. A pleasant tingling rolls through your skin, and each wave fills your head for a mere moment with strange, rapidly fading images. Without taking your eyes off the sphere, you move closer. Scan it! You aim your scanner at the artifact's glowing surface, but the device will not function. Only a sign curve is quivering spasmodically on the monochrome screen. You suddenly begin to feel numb. Oh, the no. The prickling in your hands and the anomalous radiation pressing against your head grow weaker. But a frightening sensation rises in their stead. An unknown force detaches you from your body and takes you up into the cool, ringing silence. The maelstrom hanging above Nashville embraces you. All of your consciousness unfolds like a giant canvas. Uh oh, did I make bad decisions? You into a dark auditorium. You see the maelstrom swirling over Nashville, pulling you from the crumbling walls of the base. It lifts your mind above the world. It covers the lands of the dome like a gigantic spot, in the swirling shadow of which the lights of human consciousness flicker. Some of them fade away, barely in contact with the maelstrom. Others grow dimmer and blink painfully. Some glow with a strange, cold light. Gaining strength, the maelstrom rushing westward comes crashing down onto the southern lands of the dome, leaving behind hundreds of fluttering and slowly fading lights. After sweeping out Concord and Spire Station, the maelstrom finally calms down. 
It hangs in the very center of the dome. Like a majestic, lazily swirling vortex. And your mind rushes about within it like a shining spark. Uh -oh. It takes you some time to realize that you're wandering through a fog. Eventually, the dull, white nothingness begins to dissipate, slowly returning you to reality. A noise fills your ears, a rumble resembling the sound of waves rolling ashore. You step carefully through the white haze. Fragile bits of rock crackle under your feet. Vague shadows appear from the mist over your head. Breached concrete plate bristling with exposed armature. The dusty drill of an earth mover lying on its side. Yellowed documents, boxes. Crushed steel closets that tumbled down through gaps in the floor. The space beneath your feet resembles thick but perfectly transparent ice. A vortex of clouds spins slowly below, the lights still flickering. They're the same lights you saw when you first touched the sphere. The lights are actively moving, wandering, gathering. Iridescent, they form both small and large groups, and the desert far below changes following their pattern. Settlements appear in the north, in the east, in the west, and even in the dull yellow barrens of the south. They grow right before your eyes, as if time were moving ahead at incredible speed. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. The talk? Hi there. Okay. Deal's face, why it's confident focus as ever, seems to be lit by a screen and invisible computer. He looks at me and smiles, tears on his lips. You! Wow, this is amusing. I was most certain you were dead. He walks up and touches with his palm, but you feel nothing. Anna looks disappointed. His uncertain gesture towards... Uh, suggests he feels nothing, just like you. What was I hoping for, anyway? You know how unreal it is to survive and keep my sanity? All the psychic stress uh, Maelstrom was generating? A lot of these people lost their minds. That's what we saw here. And what happened after Ankara on the west side of the dome. You know, I'm locked inside my head right now. From my perspective, it looks like the computer room where Louise locked me in. How ironic. Come on, don't be shy. He looks at an empty hand, puzzled expression. Uh, do I know you? Yes, I do. I should quit this crap. Those glasses fry up the brains right quick. Uh, where are you now? How should I know where you, where you are? In hell? Together, that bitch Decker and a meticulous bastard, what's his name? Stallman? Steelman? Oh yeah, Steel. He throws his hand in the air, and the fountains of mist follow them. I told you there was an exit. I made it. I found a car. I don't know... Oh, I... Okay, try that again. And don't you dare rip on me. I did nothing wrong. I didn't have to die with you there. His face abruptly goes blank. His voice sounds dead and dull. Not everyone can escape from Nashville. That means something, doesn't it? Clara is surrounded with white light and mist, her hands clasped in prayer. She reminds you of an angel statue from some reformist church. Seeing you, her expression changes. She crosses herself, mumbling under her breath. Get her to calm down. You're not a ghost. She nods timidly. Yes, I see. This, both you and this mist, it's all in my head. She steps towards you and kneels. I must repent. Clara's voice trembles. When Maelstrom broke, I didn't try to save anyone. I just got in the truck and drove away. I'm a terrible sinner. I know. I hope you're 
In heaven. She raises a face distorted with suffering. Hell, if you're in hell. Uh, I don't know where I'm at. Clara sighs heavily. I see. Why are you appearing to me? Is this some sort of a sign? Do you know about signs? This is when... Her voice suddenly becomes deep and thick. She drawls as if her words were being played from a corrupted tape. Clara's face alters subtly, as if it had turned to stone. Abbott is very kind to me. But his faith is nothing I could get used to. She says in a dull voice. There's no doubt. The funny, scruffy old man standing before you is Aaron Melville. The old man from the gas station. Like he also too. recognizes you. A smile wrinkles his already wrinkled face. Ah, it's you. Long time no see, sweetheart. Melville examines you closely. Mm. Safe and sound, I see. How'd you pull that off? No one survived where you were heading. The only worst place is the center of the dome, where the spire... Well, you know. The old man points vaguely upwards with his crooked finger. You're aware, aren't you? The spire is fallen. Now the road's closed. As if folks would want to come here anyway. And here we stay like crabs in a barrel. He thumps his timber leg on the ground, driving the mist away. Uh, don't think that I'm complaining. My business is on a roll. They come and they go. Melville's face seems to petrify. He speaks slowly, but flounders anyway. Uh, the gas station can be crowded nowadays. Uh, everybody needs my gas station. Oh, folks went crazy, I tell you. Fighting over nothing. The old man woefully shakes his head. A dazzling supernova-like flash sweeps across your view. The lights, frozen in the desert, start to move. And a cloudy funnel begins to slowly trail after them. The funnel spreads out under your feet. Flickering waves of lights drift northward, driven by the winds of a maelstrom. Not just a maelstrom. Maelstrom. Its shadow covers the west and south of the dome, as if it was extinguishing the lights scattered across the desert. Weird. Van Olden looks the same as he did during your first meeting. The same shiny glasses with thin rims, an arrogant expression, and a stopwatch clutched in his hands. He's examining a shred of mist hanging in the air. He's so involved in his research that he doesn't notice you at first. Meeting your eyes, the scientist instantly darts back. Then he comes up to you and begins to palpate your face, hands, and clothes. His fingers seem to sink in your face. Sebastian Van Olden screws up his lips scornfully. Yes, of course. A thought form, like the pink mist, I suppose, or any other similar anomaly. As was to be expected. Film Concord's electrical anomalies aren't the threat. New employees should be prepared for... Yeah, we'll do that. For a split second, the scornful grimace leaves the scientist's face. I actually agree with you. The Megala anomaly of Nashville turned out to be much more dangerous, and the consequences of its appearance, disastrous. On the other hand, everything that happened gives us the most plentiful research material. If Russo didn't hamper me, we would have learned Maelstrom's nature a long time ago. He runs his hand over the mist, curling around. The scientist loses all interest in you. 
steps aside, and continues to study the mist. Martin. A gray-haired man, arms stiff at his sides, stands squinting short-sightedly into the mist. Kingsley is much shorter in person, and older. He notices you. I never thought we'd meet again. I must thank you. Thanks to your report, I was able to start the evacuation in time. Martin comes closer. You notice small changes in his uniform. Some of the insignia have been replaced by larger patches resembling military chevrons. Kingsley nods as if anticipating your question. Yes, yes, the uniform is new, but the man is the same. Head of Magellan Base. I intended to resign after the incident, but Nakamura decided otherwise. I couldn't argue with her. He surveys the thick mist around you. One thing's certain. You're standing here. That means you're alive. Yes, I know what this is, partly. He looks you in the eye and says, <laughs> Scientists me. on the emulator project have been telling us a lot about it. Not everything, of course. Even they don't know what it is. Uh, okay. You smell quartz and sand tempered in the sun. No idea but as you on. try to penetrate the dispersing mist, you can't see any desert. The world around you is full of pictures. They're floating around like visions in some crystal ball. A hall covered with carpets. A golden Cronus logo on the wall among wine red banners. A power plant. A city filled with lights. Mercenaries, soldiers, armored vehicles moving through the cool wasteland in the night. The spire of a temple spire, its searchlight shining into the night sky. White corridors of research complexes. The visions fade one after another until only the last remains. The black silhouette of a strange building towering up from the lighter sand. This picture freezes before your eyes, as if giving sense to everything that came before. You have to keep talking to people over and over and over again? You hear heels clicking. A dark figure appears out of the mist before you. It's a woman. You've never met her, but you feel as though you've seen her face a thousand times. You even know the sound of her voice, although you have no idea where you could have heard it. She looks at you with surprise. Then she frowns pensively and steps closer. She stands so close you can see multicolored reflections in her bionic eye. After poking you to confirm your ethereal nature, she waves her hand left to right. Obviously, she's hoping to disperse you like mist. Naturally, she fails. The woman chuckles discontentedly and leaves. The clicking of her heels fades quickly away. 